Hello students, this is Mr. Allen. Today we are going to look at section 8.5, which is on alternating series. And as we've been doing pretty much throughout the course of this chapter, the primary objective is to determine if a series is convergent or divergent. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to determine if an alternating, we're going to use something called the alternating series test to determine if a series is convergent. We're also going to use the alternating uh, series remainder to approximate the sum of an alternating series. So given a finite number of terms of an alternating series, we'll be able to determine basically how accurate that um, approximation is. And finally, I'd like to be able uh, to classify series as either convergent, absolutely, or conditionally. So the simplest series that contains both positive and negative terms is called the alternating series. And basically what's happening is the signs flipping back and forth from positive to negative. So here we have an example of an infinite series uh, starting from zero to infinity, negative one half to the n, which can be rewritten. We can pull that negative one to the front and we can write it like thus. And here are some of the first few terms, one minus one half plus one fourth minus one eighth plus one sixteenth, et cetera. This is the alternating geometric series with R equaling negative one half. The alternating series occurs in two ways. Either the odd terms are negative or the even terms are negative. So this is the there's three important slides. This is the, probably the most important slide in this presentation. Theorem 814, the alternating series test. You'll often see me refer to it as AST. So it says, let A sub N be greater than zero. In other words, A sub N has to be positive. The alternating series, so it could either be that the first term is negative, then the second term is negative, or it could be that the first term is positive and the second term is negative. It doesn't matter as long as it's alternating between the two will be convergent if the following two conditions are met. Number one, the limit of a sub n as n goes to infinity is zero. And we also have to show that a sub n plus one is less than a sub n for all n. In other words, it has to be decreasing. a sub n has to be decreasing. So technically, there are three conditions for you to be able to use this test. You have to know that a sub n is greater than zero. You have to show that the limit of a sub n is equal to zero. And then you also have to show that it is a decreasing, um, each term in this, this series is decreasing. So let's look at um, whether or not this particular series converges or diverges. So the first thing that um, I'd like you to notice is if we went ahead and listed out some of these terms. Um, so we're starting at one. So if I plug in one there, that's gonna be n plus one. So that's two to the negative one to the two is positive. So that's going to be 1 over 1. And then the next term is going to be minus because when I plug in 2, that'd be 2 plus 1, which is 3. So the negative 1 to the third is negative. And since we're talking about the second term, this is going to be 1 half. The next term is going to be positive, And then that's going to be 1 third. And then the next one's going to be negative and on down the line. So this is an alternating series and we want to determine if it is convergent or divergent. So here are some of those terms, and I've kind of um, overlaid that. Apologize. So first thing we want to do is uh, we want to figure out what a sub n is. And a sub n in this case is 1 over n. That's what a sub n is. And I'd like to note that in this case, the a sub n is always positive, and that's an important condition of the alternating series test. Now we need to find the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n. Well, that's pretty simple. So we just got to do the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n, which is clearly 0. So we've met condition 1. We've seen that a sub n is greater than 0. We've met condition 2. We now know that the limit of a sub n is 0. And then third of all, the last condition we need to make sure is that this is indeed decreasing. And this is actually pretty easy to show. We need to show that a sub n plus one is less than a sub n. So what is a sub n plus one? Well, that would be one over n plus one. We need to show that that's less than one over n. So now all I would do is I would just cross multiply here. So when you cross multiply here, you're gonna get n is less than or equal to n plus one. 
I would subtract in on both sides and you'll get zeros less than or equal to one. So this shows that indeed a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n for all n. Therefore, so now I'm going to write my final conclusion here to the left. This is a convergent series by AST, the alternating series test. So that's the easiest example I can do, actually. It's called the alternating harmonic series. So let's look now at a, a different one here. So it says determine the convergence or divergence of this series. So it's much more complicated. So we can, again, identify that this right here is what's making it alternating. And we can list out some of the first few terms here just to give us some idea. So the first term is negative 5.5 plus the next term would be 3.4 minus 2.7 plus 2.4118 minus and etc. Okay. Now I'm not going to list out all these terms, but there's the first few and you can indeed see that this is an alternating series. Now it looks pretty good because it appears that, you know, we're adding and subtracting a smaller and smaller amount each time. So it looks like this is probably going to um, um, converge. So let's go ahead and check our limit. Oh, and I should note that our a sub n here is 2 and I'm going to write in here, it's 2n squared plus 9 over n squared plus 1. I just want to make sure my variables agree. And this is clearly greater than 0 for all n, where uh, n is equal to 1 or more. So that's so we met the first condition. Now let's look at the second condition. Let's do the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n. And with a little bit of work, you can clearly see that that's going to be 2. That is not equal to zero. So this series does not converge. In fact, this series is going to diverge. And it diverges by theorem 8.2, which is the nth term test. So you can go back and look at that. This is actually, it looks like it's going in a good direction, but it turns out at the end of this series, the terms are plus minus two, plus minus two. Plus. So it's just going to alternate. It's going to bounce back and forth. So this series diverges. So be careful. Um, it, they don't have to converge. And this is an example of one where they do not. Uh, sorry about the crying in the background. That's my son. It's a uh, morning here. It's actually Martin Luther King Day. This is my day off and I'm trying to get some work done in advance. So uh, the alternating series remainder. So this is where we're going to talk about how accurate is a partial sum for an alternating series. And this only works for the alternating series. And this is theorem of 8.15. This is an important theorem. I would say it's not as important as the first one. So basically, here's the idea. So you are adding and subtracting, adding, subtracting in these series, and typically it's smaller and smaller amounts. So the more terms you go out, the more accurate it is. So in a nutshell, here's what the theorem is saying. By the way, S is the actual sum. And then S sub N is the partial sum. Okay. So these two things do not equal each other unless n is the, you know, if we added infinitely many terms. So they are not equal to each other in most cases. I shouldn't say it's never the case, but in most cases, this is true. So these do not have to be equal to each other, and they typically are not. And it turns out that the remainder, in other words, the leftover part is equal to the exact sum minus the partial sum. And that kind of makes sense. So we're, we're trying to appro approximate, let's say, pi. Well, let's say we're using an alternating series to do that. So we first of all, let's say we guess a little bit high. Let's say we guess four. And then the next calculation, we get a little bit closer and it guesses three. Now, three is closer to pi than four was. So we went down. But now we're too low. So the next term is positive. So it's a little bit too high. But a, a little bit too high, but not as high as the error was for when we said three. And then it... It's going to bounce back and forth. That's typically what happens. So it, it, if we stop at some finite number of steps, then we're going to have the remainder of the series, which is going to basically hold the exact value, and we're kind of chopping that off. So this is the important rule to know right here.
And it basically says this, and I'm going to just forget the absolute value for just a second. Here's what it says. The actual sum minus the partial sum is equal to the remainder. That's what I just said. And that remainder has to be less than the next term in the series. So again, we're going back and forth above and below the actual sum. But each time we go up and below, above and below, we're actually getting closer and closer and closer. So each step, the error has to be less than what you just stepped because the next step is going to be below, but it's going to be less below than that previous step. So you're getting closer and closer and closer. So anyways, this is the important idea right here. So let's look at an example of this. So here we have an alternating series. You can see it's alternating. Notice we've got this factorial again. And just a reminder, you know, n factorial is equal to n times n plus 1. Oops, that should be minus, sorry. Try that again. n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 on down the line. So what we want to try to do here is we want to figure out um, how accurate is this going to be. So we want to approximate, oops, let me erase that. Let's see, just erase everything on this slide. There we go. Approximate the sum of the series for the first six terms. So we have the first six terms here listed out. So, oh, actually the first thing we want to do is we'll make sure that this series converges. And it will converge, and the reason that it will converge is because we basically just need to do um, the limit of this. First of all, all these terms, a, this is a sub n right here. Those are always going to be positive, so it's greater than zero. It turns out that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is equal to zero, so that's good. And we can show that a sub n plus 1 is less than or equal to a sub n. Now, I'm not going to do that here because I kind of want to get to the other details of this example. But all of those things are true. So it does converge by the alternating series test. All right. So here are the first six terms. I have them listed now. Here are the first six terms. And it turns out that the sum of the first six terms is 97 over 144, which is approximately 0.632. Now, that is not the exact sum. It's an approximation of the sum. Now, we want to find out how accurate is this approximation. So now we're going to use that formula that I just mentioned. Now, remember, we're here we're talking about n equaling 6. So I'm telling you that the exact sum minus the partial sum, in this case six terms, is equal to the remainder. And that has to be less than or equal to the seventh term in the series. Well, we can easily figure out what the seventh term in the series is. We can just do the next term. So the last term was 1 over 6 factorial, so we just need to do 1 over 7 factorial. Notice that it, it's going to have to be positive this time. So we get 1, or 1 over 5,040. So we're basically done. Here's what you need to know. This approximation has to be close to the exact sum by no more than this amount of error. This is the maximum error. It can be no more than this. So our final answer is, and I'm going to erase what I just did there so that we can see that. So we can conclude that the actual sum of this series is less than 199 over 315. Uh, I'm sorry, less than 177 over 280, which is approximately 0.632. But it also um, has to be more than. Uh, or equal to 199 over 315, which is 0.6317. So this approximation right here, which is between these two numbers, this number here and this number here, is no more than 1 over 5,040 uh, units away. So that's how we approximate an alternating series using, go back to this last slide, uh, the alternating series remainder theorem. Okay, last thing. Absolute convergence and conditional convergence. First of all, let's talk about absolute convergence. 
if the sum of the absolute value of the terms of a series converges, then the series itself has to converge. Again, I apologize. My son's crying in the background. So let's look at this example right here. Um, here we've got an alternating series of 1 over n squared. So please note that both of these, a sub n, is going to be greater than 0 always. And let's just go ahead and assume, and it is true, that a sub n plus 1 is greater than or equal to a sub n. Uh, I think I wrote that back. It should be less than. Now this is going to be a p series, and this is also going to be a p series. Now when I do the absolute value of this guy, this is going to be a p series of 1 over n squared. And here n is greater than 1. So this is going to converge, and since the absolute value of this converges, it converges absolutely. In other words, the absolute value of it converges, and therefore the series converges, and it converges absolutely. Over here, though, if we look at a sub n, here our a sub n is going to be 1 over n, which is the harmonic series, which we know diverges. And since this diverges, then we cannot use this to claim that it's absolutely convergent. In fact, it's going to turn out that it's not absolutely convergent, it's conditionally convergent. This series does converge, but you cannot use A at, or AST to prove its convergence. So this is probably the most more important theorem. So I said there was three important ones. So this one is the absolute convergence theorem. So a series is absolutely convergent if its absolute value of a sub n converges. And it is conditionally convergent if the sum converges, but the absolute value diverges. So that's what we just saw in that last slide. Now let's look at an example. I've got two examples here to kind of finish things out. So this is the, this is the one we just talked about. So I'm just going to go through this again. So let's look at this. All right. So let's do the following. Let's just do the absolute value of this. And this is going to give us the sum of 1 over n squared. And we're going to start from 1. We're going to go up to infinity. This is clearly a p-series. And this is a p-series with p equaling 2, which is greater than 1. Therefore, we know it converges Okay, by the p-series test since it's uh, convergent which means the absolute value converges. So now we could go back oops, to this slide right here, the absolute convergence uh, theorem. If the absolute value converges, then so does the series. So since this absolute value converges, this sum or this series converges. Uh, converges. And not only does it converge, it converges absolutely. So the absolute value converges or converges and the series itself converges. Now let's look at the bottom example here. This will be the last one and we'll be done. Here we're going to play the same game. We're going to do the sum of the absolute value of a sub n. In this case, that sum is going to be the sum of 1 over n to the 1 half. Here we again have a p-series, and this p-series, this is p equals 1 half, which is less than 1. Therefore, it diverges. This absolute value diverges. However, if we did the limit of 1 over the square root of n, which by the way is a sub n, that is equal to 0. Remember, a sub n here, in this case, is just that square root, 1 over the square root of n. This is our a sub n. That's equal to 0. Also, you'll notice that's always positive. And also, you'll know that uh, a sub n plus 1 is always going to be less than a sub n. So the series converges, but its absolute value does not converge. So the conclusion is, is that this series, I'm just going to write sigma for series, converges conditionally. Now you might ask yourself, 
you know, Mr. Allen, why do I care if it converges conditionally or not? It's kind of beyond the scope of this course, but in future courses, we need um, to know that series converge um, absolutely in order for some nice properties to happen in higher level mass involving calculus. So anyways, that's kind of the reason. Um, but you will be asked questions like this on the AP exam. And I think that brings us to the end. We've talked about um, using the alternating series test. We've talked about using the alternating series remainder theorem. And now we've talked about the difference between uh, absolute convergent series um, and conditional convergent series.